uh, introduction. Always do. They, last, I can't beat last night though. It was over at the Reese Theater. It was a wonderful setting. If you haven't been there, you need to go over there. It's a beautiful, beautiful new. Uh, the remodeling they've done over the last six years has just turned into something fantastic. And something you all should be proud of. Um, anyway, if you can get to the Reese Theater sometime, you should do that. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Um, uh, but what I started to say was that, that they put my name up on the marquee. And that was really cool. <laughs> I, I had that once before. I made the dean's list once when I was in college. And they put it on uh, up at the Holiday Inn in Goshen. What used to be the Holiday Inn in Goshen. They put it up there. Congratulations on making the dean's list for one day. And that last night was for like one hour. But that's the second time in my life I've gotten my name in lights. And it was wonderful. Uh, Anita said, if it's anything like last night's presentation, you're going to love it. Well, this is not at all like last night's presentation. <laughs> and the idea was that some of the same people might come to both, and we didn't want to put them to sleep. So I tried to put together something a little bit different today. Um, but I'm going to try and race through it a little bit, because this is going to be a, a walk across the, the entire length of the, house, uh, the highway from New York City to San Francisco. And uh, I've had the chance to drive the whole thing over uh, the course of several years. And, um, and then I will hone in on Indiana and specifically Marshall County in the second half of it. But I'm going to try to move through it a little bit because just sitting around talking with you folks, a lot of questions came up. It's it well, Route 30, right? Or, or uh, what, what's that little statue that's out there in Dyer? Or, you know, and, and you may have other questions. So I'm going to try and go through my presentation and then open it up and see what kinds of things you have on your mind or what you question or what you want to, what you want to talk about. So without, oh, I, and one other thing on this slide, before I move it on, I, uh, Anita asked me for a name for it. And I said, well, I don't, you know, I'm going to talk about the Lincoln Highway. I, uh, but so many times people say, well, is that Route 66 or is that Route 30 or, or that one is more famous. What's the matter? How come nobody knows about the Lincoln Highway? And uh, so I, I affectionately call it the big brother uh, to Route 66 because, first of all, it's a coast-to-coast -coast highway, right? It goes from New York City to San Francisco. And Route 66 only goes two-thirds of the, of the way from Chicago down to Santa Monica. So they kind of kind of cross, although they are together for a couple miles in the Chicago area. Um, so that's one reason uh, that, I, that I call it the, uh, Route 66's big brother. It's the... To, to bring some recognition to the Lincoln Highway. You know, and it predates it by 15 years or so. So anyway, so I'll tell you more as we go along. Get my water out of this. This was founded. Jeff, if I turn this uh, off, is that going to bother well, you? Bother. I don't think it'll bother me. Is that better for seeing? Actually, yes. it's, it's better because you probably can't see me. <laughs> Not my point. <laughs> That's okay. Um, this, the, the, the road was founded by a Hoosier, a fellow by the name of Carl Fisher. He grew up in, was born in Greensburg, but had the first uh, auto dealership in Indianapolis going back in the early 1900s. He uh, was a founder of uh, the Dixie Highway, in addition to the Lincoln Highway. The Dixie Highway goes from Sault Ste. Marie down to Miami Beach. Part of his rationale there was he also owned a lot of property in, in, in uh, Miami and wanted to sell uh, some some property to folks. So he wanted to get them down there, and he so he created the Dixie Highway. Um, a very much an entrepreneur, very much a marketing person. Um, two years before he helped found the Lincoln Highway Association and therefore the Lincoln Highway, he created something else you would know about, and that's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So here's a picture of, of uh, Carl on the speedway in 1912, I think it is, the same year that he was beginning to organize for the Lincoln Highway. Uh, and that invitation on the right is, he invited a whole slew of different uh, uh, auto friends uh, to Indianapolis, and they had a meeting to talk about the development of the Lincoln Highway, and that is a copy of the original invitation that went out to folks to come and, come and talk about it. So that's Carl on your left and Henry Joy on the right. These are the two driving forces of the Lincoln Highway going back in the day. Uh, Carl Fisher, as I said, pulled everybody together, 
Henry B. Joy was the president of the Packard uh, Motor Company or uh, Packard Car Company and became the first president of the Lincoln Highway Association. <coughs> Henry Joy is the one who came along and wanted to name it the Lincoln Highway because his father had a relationship with Abraham Lincoln. Uh, they had worked together years before, so he, he wanted to be able to honor that. This, this memorial, the Lincoln Highway, uh, was nine years before they created the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., that many of you have probably visited. So it's really the oldest and the longest and, uh, memorial to a, a great president. Um, what else do I have about him? Anything else? I to? He's truly a visionary and uh, the president of a company called the Presto Light uh, Company. This, this was a part of his marketing skills again. He wanted to sell more cars because he's the guy who had most of the franchise for selling lights on the front end. And by selling more cars or creating a road where people would want to drive and take a car, you could sell more headlamps. So this guy was marketing, kind of a marketing genius. So the, uh, the slide, this slide shows you the route, the original route. The original route did not come through Marshall County in Indiana. It, uh, it comes in over around Route 30 on the, on the Ohio border, and, and once it gets to Fort Wayne, it, it heads up Route 30, what we know as Route 33 today, and it runs up through Lake Air and some other small towns into Goshen, into Elkhart, and on over to uh, South Bend, uh, where it picks up 20 for a while through New Carlisle, and starts to head south uh, on Route 2 down to, uh, through Laporte and on down to uh, Valparaiso, picks up 30 again, and heads on out of the state to Chicago Heights. Right? So it goes through Sherville and Merrillville and Dyer before it leaves the state. So that was the original route in 1913. In fact, it was named, it was officially opened in October on Halloween Day, uh, 1913. Uh, and of course, there were celebrations. There were 750 towns along the Lincoln Highway or more. Um, lots of celebrations. Lots of disappointment, too, with people who weren't on it. There was a, somebody asked me the question about lobbying. There was huge amounts of lobbying going on saying, I want it coming through my town, I want it coming through my town. And uh, and some were, there were some winners and some losers, unfortunately. I mean, it, now, what that led to was uh, a phenomenon what we call feeder routes, because shortly after the Lincoln High was named, and there were people that were disappointed, they started creating feeder routes. Um, some were very logical, coming from Washington, D.C., up to Gettysburg. Coming from Detroit, where most of the car manufacturing was being, a lot of the car manufacturing was done, from Detroit down to Elkhart <coughs> to, to join the, the, the Lincoln Highway. Uh, into downtown Chicago, off of, from, uh, from uh, south of Chicago. So lots of feeder routes were created. Into Colorado, which was not part of the original route. It was right through Wyoming. Um, but they created a, a feeder route down to, to uh, Denver. Um, so, I will move on. So it starts in Times Square, and this is where it, where it starts on the eastern edge. And now we're going to start moving across the country. <clears throat> Oop, I didn't mention the second one. Uh, this is a skyline of New York City, obviously. And so this one was taken when I got across the bridge and got over uh, the, through the Lincoln Tunnel, I should say. And on the other side, in uh, I think it's Peace Weehawken, New Jersey, looking back at downtown New York City. So I'm driving along on the, on the other side of the highway in New Jersey, going uh, headed that way. Getting west. <coughs> <coughs> Picture on the left is, a, is an old, um, it's now an inn, but it goes back to the 1800s uh, and it has some uh, old spelled O L D E, as you might ex uh, expect, but as I go across the country here, I'm going to point out things that I, I found fascinating that speak to history. And it's not necessarily that I went in there or that there's even a story about it, but I saw this building right along the Lincoln Highway in New Jersey and said, man, that, what a great place that's got to be. I don't know that for a fact, but it's a good picture anyway. <laughs> the other one is a, is a shame, actually. It was, it's, a, it's a place called the Shoe Fly Inn, and, and they sold Shoe Fly Pie and, and lots of other stops. And if you think back to the days when you were traveling in the 40s and 50s and 60s, there were lots of these places along the highway. 
you know, that had kind of a unique look to that. Um, this place, unfortunately, has just recently been sold and may, in fact, not, it may come down. I don't know that that's decided yet, but it's recently been changed hands, and so we're hopeful it'll be restored and, and maintained. But again, lots of those kinds of places as you drive along the Lincoln Highway. Remember, I'm taking you across the across the entire country now, so that I'm really being spotty and picking pictures here that are kind of unique and, and fun. Um, and there are thousands of these kinds of places to take a look at when you drive it. How about that picture on the left? The little lady in the shoe. That's along the Lincoln Highway in Pennsylvania. And um, there hallum and it's called the shoe house it just recently with it well i say recently as we get older recently can be anywhere from five years <laughs> to 20 years i think yeah. but uh, so within the last 20 years at least it's changed hands but it's yeah. but it's being maintained and so it's really cool to stop and see some place like it. you'll see a couple more places like that in the east when we uh, move on jeff yes sir is, is the shoe is it a, a restaurant or hotel it's a or house private residence? it's a private residence now currently it's you know, in 110 years since its inception, things have changed hands sometimes, been repurposed in different ways, but currently I think it's a uh, private residence. Uh, the next picture is an Art Deco uh, gas station that has been restored and maintained, very much like the one, the mobile station here in town, only you can tell that the architecture here was really unique, and it's, uh, uh, again, the, and they're very proud to be on the Lincoln Highway, so it's a good place to stop. Moving on, when we get to Bedford, Pennsylvania, I said there are unique places to stop and see. Here's a, a large uh, uh, coffee pot that still exists, and it's a place to stop and see and, and visit. And, uh, uh, and next to it is, within 50 or 60 miles, is a uh, teapot. That one's in West Virginia. The, the Lincoln Highway in West Virginia is about six miles long. It's, it's near the town of Chester, as I, yeah, Chester, as I recall. And it kind of wanders through there, but it's right there up in that upper little panhandle at the top of the state. And uh, but this is there, so and both have been maintained pretty well, so they're good classic uh, landmarks to stop and see. A little further on, and the reason this picture is in here is a uh, is a brick section in Ohio. I'm, now we're, we've left uh, New, New York, New Jersey, West Virginia. We're now in Ohio, uh, and this one is. Uh, uh, you can see a piece of a, a, a stretch of brick highway that was done very early on on the Lincoln Highway and has been maintained nicely. There are other places like this across the country, but very few that are as well maintained as, as this one is. And then the next one doesn't even looks like a photograph, I think, but it's actually a mural in Bucyrus that, uh, and they have several in Bucyrus. I should digress for a minute because I'm not sure I have one in this slide deck, but. If you ever go to Ligonier, Indiana, that yeah, used to be there, it is a city of murals. They have probably 20 or 22, as I recall, murals on the sides of buildings that are period pieces. They are they're throwbacks to a, a, a bygone era, and they're pretty cool. This happens to be a good one, I think, in Bucyrus. I do have trouble finding what key I have to get down there sometimes. I'm going to skip Indiana and come back to Indiana. We're just going to fly over Indiana and come back to it after we get to, get to California. Um, in Illinois here, this happens to be Ronald Reagan's uh, boyhood home uh, in Dixon. And next to it is, uh, was a surprise to me, was finding a windmill on the uh, western edge of, of uh, Illinois. Uh, but again, with a uh, shop inside it that you can go, go shopping in if you would like to you know, buy some windmills or something you know, to that effect. But that's right close to the Mississippi River. We're getting right across the Mississippi and keep going west. George Preston had a gas station that was kind of built a, um, a monument to the Lincoln Highway, if you will, and collected things, uh, uh, older things, whether it's gas pumps or signs or whatever. And, but, but, uh, and this was right on the Lincoln Highway. George died maybe 10 years ago. Uh, but they again have maintained it pretty well in his honor uh, because it was again one of those things when you, if you want to get out and drive the road you're looking for these kinds of landmarks I think and that are that are tributes to uh, a bygone era and the second one 
you know, there's a story we we'll always, I guess I should talk about preservation. Um, this next one is in Tama, uh, Iowa. Um, both of these are in Iowa, by the way. It, it's a Lincoln Highway Bridge, and you can see, I think you can see the Lincoln Highway is carved into the, the side of it. Uh, spectacular. This too was in need of repair, and they were talking about tearing it down, but I think the city got together, and maybe it's a story like the Reese Theater, and has uh, restored it, and it is restoring it at this present time. So I think it's gonna get saved, but we're done. We all, those of us who are in love with the things that you see along Lake and I, we all have our fingers crossed that this will be maintained because it's really cool. The other thing, I could tell you a Made Right story. Is anybody familiar with Made Right? Mm -hmm. Loose meat, loose meat sandwiches? Yeah? Uh, well, their home is Iowa. And so this, the reason I took this picture is, uh, and, and I could go on, I got two or three made right stories that have occurred to me over the years. But there used to be one in Goshen where I grew up, and so I won't tell you that story, but um, I will later if you want to stick around and talk about it. Uh, but it's not there anymore. There are still out there. Uh, it's a loose meat burger with a kind of a special um, uh, sauce or... They're awful. Huh? They're awful. <laughs> I, think, I think they're wonderful. Good. <laughs> so anyway, there are probably a half a dozen of those still, you know, and they're mostly in Iowa. There are, I think a couple maybe up in Minnesota as well, but uh, most of them have been pulled back to the state of Iowa. Uh, the next picture I just saw again, this is my picture of, in Woodbine, which is in Iowa, and it shows you what the roads were probably like at the time they started to try and pave all the way west. Uh, sometimes they paved right over the dirt, dirt road. Sometimes it was adjacent to it. It's where they actually paved in the, in the Lincoln Highway, kind of moved over to the paved section over time, but this was what where they were uh, initially, and I think it's a cool picture. Just, you know, it conjures up views of the past, or memories of the past. <coughs> I was talking to Joyce. Joyce Chambers, by the way, is sitting over here with her sunglasses <coughs> on. It's, uh, it's, it's so bright in here, she's gonna wear shades. <laughs> And she had cataract surgery yesterday, so we're delighted to have her here. But she's an officer in our Lincoln uh, State Association. She's also an officer in the National Association, so I'm glad Joyce could join us here. Um, she and I were talking about seedling miles. When, when Carl Fisher got this thing going, he, one of his goals was to raise a million dollars to pave the road all the way to San Francisco. And they got into it for about a year, and a year or two later, they realized a million dollars ain't going to cut it. It's going to be a lot more than that. So they kind of shifted their direction and said, let's go build in every state a seedling mile, what, what, the, what the road could look like in the future. And the one, there is one here. We, we're not sure exactly where it is. It's, the, the paper itself talks about it being somewhere between South Bend and New Carlisle. And um, we're not sure where it is, but maybe we'll figure out where it is. Uh, the, the first one was in Malta, Illinois. There are, I've seen them in Nebraska. I've seen them in other states. Uh, and they, you know, try to preserve them. Say so this was the, this was the first paved portion of the Lincoln Highway in my town, or in my city, or in my state. Uh, the, the the most well, I'll get to it. remind me. I'll talk about the most famous one here in a few minutes. Uh, the next one uh, I like this picture because it shows where the Lincoln Highway went between these hackberry trees, and people would come through and spend the night. Uh, pull the car off the road and pull underneath the trees and spend the night and put up their tent or pull down the side of their trailer and and and, and sleep. I just think it's a cool picture. It's in Nebraska. We got to Nebraska. A portion of this is adjacent to or on the Pony Express line, which you may or may not know only ran for a few years, but it's famous, you know, because of old westerns and stuff. But um, so you may find outposts like this as a Pony Express station in um, Gothenburg, Nebraska. Buffalo Bill's Ranch is a cool place to stop, right on the Lincoln Highway in North Platte, uh, Nebraska. There, uh, you also see a lot of old buildings that have fallen apart. And so this is one that's on the Nebraska uh, line Nebraska-Wyoming line, and it, you can see there's a Wyoming on one side and Nebraska on the other side, where there used to be a, a nice uh, diner there to stop into. 
and the other road tells you, shows you what the, again, another picture of what the road looked like probably back in the day, somewhere uh, east of Cheyenne. We're now in Wyoming. This is, this is a tree in a rock, uh, right out in the middle of the median of, uh, in Wyoming. Again, a, a landmark for anybody traveling west. And the, the second one was a surprise to me. I didn't even know about this. I, you know, I, there are maps, there are books that tell you some of these highlights when you start driving and you start looking for them. Um, uh, this one was a surprise to me because they didn't have any book. I think we stopped in, in uh, or I stopped, I guess I was by myself on this one. Carol didn't go with me on this portion. She got tired of me stopping to take a picture. Um, so I, I stopped in here for a soda or something, and I came out, and there's a Lincoln Highway. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but there's a Lincoln Highway on that pump. And um, so it, it was a surprise to me that I took a picture of it. A little further west, there's a, some proving grounds. Um, and so the, where the Lincoln Highway went, you, you can't get on it without special permission. So I, had, I did not get special permission, so I had to take a bypass around it. But again, you're out in the middle of, of uh, now you're in the middle of Utah, uh, driving on dirt roads around the outside of this proving grounds and hoping they're not setting anything off while you're doing it. And uh, there's Black Rock Beach, which is in the Great Salt Lake. It's on the edge of the Great Salt Lake. So those are both stops for me, or not stops, but things to see along the way. I, another thing that interested me driving down the road is somebody put a little Lincoln Highway L up on a, on a fence post, which uh, told me I was still on the right route. And back in the day, if you think about it, before there were numbered roads, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, or before there were uh, signs like we see today, a proliferation of signs everywhere, something, you had to come up with some way of, of, of uh, marking your road. The Yellowstone Trail, somebody asked me about the Yellowstone Trail, which, which parallels us here in this part of the uh, part of the state, uh, has a yellow band around the post. Some of you may have seen those here driving around. The Lincoln Highway, uh, uh, this was very much what they painted uh, on the side of telephone poles, on the side of <laughs> trees, wherever they could find something that would tell you we're still on the right road. And then the other picture is the biggest little city in the world that goes right through the middle of Reno. In Reno, there's a whole lot of what I'll call shtick, stuff from the 50s around. There's not a lot from the 20s or the 30s, but there's a lot of old motels and old uh, restaurants and old diners and things like that. It's a neat little street to drive down as you go through Reno. Nevada. I, I got us to Nevada already. In fact, we're getting ready to leave Nevada and go into California. Um, many of you probably know the story of the Donner Party and Donner Pass. There's some beautiful scenery there at that, at that point. Um, and then you get up on top of the Sierra Nevadas or wherever, and you go down what's called Dog Valley Drive, and it's just spectacular, the pines on either side, and you can visualize. If you ever saw the Lucille Ball... Uh, long, uh, long trailer. Yeah, uh, the trailer movie. Uh, this is some of the scenery that they saw when you, when you watch that movie. And then I made it to Lincoln Park, which is on the uh, uh, west side of San Francisco, and so I stopped at the at the marker there. I didn't mention markers uh, earlier. In 1928, as a, the LHA uh, uh, stopped uh, working, stopped closed their association. By that time, the numbering system had come along and was so they no longer need were naming uh, specific highways. The federal government was starting to put money into it, and state governments were starting to put money into it. So the LHA said, I think we're done. But the last thing they did before they uh, stopped was they partnered with the Boy Scouts of America and put up 2,400 uh, four foot high markers uh, to depict the Lincoln Highway as it was then. By that time, it had changed, and I'm going to talk about that, as, and it came through Marshall County, came right through the middle of, of Plymouth. So in 1928, um, these markers, that, and here's one that, that I stood by the one in, in uh, Lincoln Park. Um, anyway, so that's that story. We just made it, but we got to come back to Indiana. Here, here are the two routes through Indiana. 
that darker route is uh, is the original route. You can see that I call it the hump part of the route. It goes up through Goshen, Elkhart, South Bend, works its way back down through LaPorte to Valparaiso and out of the state. So it's not really Route 30, obviously, right? It is very close to, it is on Old 30 uh, from the Ohio border to Fort Wayne and from Valparaiso, the edge of Valparaiso to uh, not, not 100%, but pretty close to it, all the way to uh, the, to Chicago Heights, to the Illinois border. But other than that, it's north. By, by 1925, the, the uh, LHA, in their wisdom, was saying, and we can take a lot of miles off of this thing. And so in many states, they had shortened it. And in Indiana, it was decided that they would go on Old 30. Right, and Old 30 is not right on New 30, which didn't come along until the 60s, as I recall. Right, so it's Old 30. And it went through the middle of Bourbon. And it went through the middle of Plymouth. It didn't go along today's I-30. Okay, does that make sense? So here we are at the Ohio border. We're going to drive through Indiana pretty quickly. Um, over on the east side, there are three little towns, Zulu, Townley, and Wisconsin, which are beautiful little towns on Old 30 before you get to Fort Wayne. This is another thing you'll find when you're driving the route is rem what I call remnants, pieces of the old road. This is a little remnant of the road. It's in uh, uh, up just outside Zulu, which is a great little town. There's no town there to speak of anymore, but it's it's a great place. Um, in Pisanson, another cute little town, there's a uh, the uh, St. Louis Catholic Church, a spectacular small church. Uh, the settlement was from people from France at the time, and that's why it's called Pisanson after a town in France called Pisanson. And there's no again no real town there. There is a school, there's a church. It's a, it's a beautiful place. And this. 1890s uh, old one-room schoolhouse still stands there. We are uh, we don't that's being used as storage for the church right now. Um, out there. Well, I'm there every year. I see it. Every year. <coughs> right there. But so we don't know what's going to happen with this time goes on. But we got our eye on it to try to help make sure that it's restored and maintained. Oh, and next to it then is is uh, we're in uh, New Haven now, another another town, uh, very much a canal town early on, but then on the Lincoln Highway as time went on. And this is a restored depot right along the train lines. Uh, somebody else asked me, did it follow the train line? The answer is yes. The trains were train lines. The New York Central and Penn Central and all that lines went east and west, and the Lincoln Highway pretty much followed it, uh, and very very close to it, within a mile in most places. There's a place in Fort Wayne called Cindy's Diner. And for breakfast, you can get this thing that's got everything in it, and they call it garbage. So people go to go there to eat some garbage. Uh, also, the uh, Harrison Street Bridge is where the Lincoln Highway goes in downtown Fort Wayne, and it's got a little marker on it that talks about the date and talks about the mileage from New York City and San Francisco on it. So it's a nice, nice again marker to see. In um, I mentioned this last night at Miriam, there's a cemetery that uh, has, a, has a cemetery, or has a uh, marker for Uncle Sam. And there's an ongoing, I don't know if it's Uncle Sam for sure, not but I'm claiming it because nobody's stopped it. Um, there, ha there was an argument back in the 40s and 50s with, with the city of Troy, New York, that, of where Uncle Sam was actually buried. The, the, the person whose picture was the replica for the Uncle Sam that we know from uh, the past. And uh, both towns claim it as this is the spot. Supposedly he was living in the east but came west and lived with family for, uh, for the last 10 or 15 years of his life. And that's why he's buried in Miriam. So anyway, that's a picture of me on one of my, one of my two walks across the state uh, by his marker. That place is a cool place. It's a, it's a bed and breakfast, if you will, in, in Kimmel. And uh, when we take our tours next year, we're going to stop there. So, but anyway, it's a it's a beautiful place. It only has four rooms, but the people there are wonderful. You can stop and have a tea or a small or a breakfast or whatever. Um, and it's an 1870s house right on the Lincoln Highway. Mm -hmm. 
we come further north, I didn't I didn't show you anything in Ligonier exactly. I should have, but I did mention their murals. So that it comes up through Ligonier and still on 33 and goes to uh, uh, goes towards Goshen. This is some Benton cabins, some cabins in the little unincorporated area called Benton, a little bit east of Goshen. They're still there. They're from the 20s and 30s. They're in the process of being restored. So you can see both an old time picture as well as what they look like as uh, as this gentleman bought the property and bought the places and he's been uh, a labor of love re, uh, redoing all of them. Then we go to Goshen. Goshen has a number of things that, uh, and that's where I grew up, so I could show you lots of pictures of things going on in Goshen, but, and some of them you wouldn't want to see, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, but they probably are most famous for people who are driving the road to, to see the old police booth that they built in the in the 30s. It, it was open until the 50s, and they had it manned uh, with a policeman 24 hours a day. To uh, and it's right down at the center of town, next to the courthouse, and so you can see it long long ways in either direction if you were worried about bank robbers or anybody else coming through. I'm not sure anyone ever, uh, and they eventually closed it because I don't think they ever uh, saw a bank robber. It's now uh, the Historical Society. <coughs> you can take tours of it if you want to go see it sometime. We get to Elkhart, a couple, just a couple things in Elkhart. Uh, the Lerner Theater is on your right, and the Lerner Theater has been restored over the last 15 years. Spectacular place. It's got an old 1925 organ in it that pops up out of the floor, and, and a <coughs> crystal ballroom upstairs that is fabulous. So, uh, worth taking a tour of sometime if you get a chance. And also on the left, <coughs> is the New York Central uh, National Museum. And so a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, train uh, uh, cars and, and model cars and things that probably like your train thing upstairs times 10. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge museum in and of itself. We're still going west on that first route, the 19, what I call the 1913 route. Mishawaka has some great stately uh, mansions along the Lincoln Way as you enter town. That's the uh, the Beaver Mansion as you come into Mishawaka. Um, on the other side of town uh, from that, uh, it's just as you get ready to go into South Bend, um, is the Bonnie Dune Drive-In. Some of you may have stopped there. There were used to be a several of them. I think there might be still two, or, you know, or just one. I'm not sure, but they have. I was in there not too long ago, and he still has a bunch of Route 66 signs. It was not on Route 66. It's right on the Lincoln Highway. So I gave him a sign that said, "You got to put this in your window. You got the wrong, you got the wrong road." But that's where you know Route 66 has done a better marketing job over the last 50 or 60 years. Downtown South Bend, um, and we dedicated a plaque. It is where the Dixie. It is one place where the Dixie Highway and the Lincoln Highway cross. Another one is right here in this town. So we need to have a somehow or other we'll get a plaque that, that commemorates that as well. But the Dixie Highway and, and this is right downtown at Washington and Michigan. And the other one is uh, just shows how we have marked the uh, road over the last 10 years. Uh, we had uh, a sign you see on there that calls us after we became a byway, an official designation by the state, we got new signs made and started marking very much like the Michigan Road is marked well through here. And you've seen probably a sign of ours going east and west through here too as well. I'm beginning to use my hands more. New Carlisle has some historic plaques up, which are quite nice, right downtown in the middle of town. Uh, and they also have done something that I don't think any other of uh, the city cities in uh, Indiana have done yet, and that is they bought some uh, some signs or some uh, leather. Uh, work for both the Michigan Road, which goes through there, and the Lincoln Highway. So every other one has this has this sign up there that says Lincoln Highway or Michigan Road. And we obviously we kind of like that. So everybody driving through town gets to learn a little bit about the Lincoln, or see a little bit about the Lincoln Highway. Then you come out to a place that used to be called Bob's, Bob's Barbecue, it's now Jenny Ray's. And you know, something like 20 or more buses a day used to go through there, coming from Detroit towards Chicago, coming from Fort Wayne and across the Lincoln Highway and going up towards Chicago, but kind of crisscrossing there, where 20 and two cross, that's where this is. 
Uh, if you're, if it's a great place to go in and get a tenderloin or go in and get some fresh homemade pie or whatever. So I always do when I drive through. In the port, we have, a, we have a kiosk there as well. This is next to their depot, which has also been remodeled recently in the last few years. And then further on, as you're starting to now leave Laporte and head toward Valparaiso, this is the little one-lane bridge. And again, to me, is a, a, is a period look, you know, of a, of a bygone era. era. It goes, it's a, it goes underneath the train tracks and it crosses over the other side. It's along Route 2, old Route 2. It's not even current Route 2. It's old Route 2. Then you get to Lake County and, and you come to the um, Deep River County Park and there's a, they have a, a mill there that uh, the water wheel is still working and it's been out for the last year or so but it's now working again. But a spectacular place and they have a little shop to, to, and it's right on the edge of Lake County as you go into Lake County. A little further on is a cute old bridge called the Old Lincoln Highway, right? Uh, this is just as you cross from Merrillville into Sherville, and you're on you're on uh, 73rd Avenue at that point in time. You're no longer on 30, but you're on which is, you're on 73rd Avenue, which is parallel. But these are the kinds of things I like looking for when I'm driving along, looking for landmarks that that kind of highlight the the road. Maybe I'm weird. Yeah. No comment. Oh, this is something we talked about. This is called the Osterman Bench and ideal section. Early on I talked about seedling miles. The, the very best and outstanding seedling mile is in Dyer. It's over here on our, our western border. Um, it's just, past, just west of Route 41 going north and south along Route 30. And it's on the south side of the road. 41. I said 41. Did you say 40? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, and and uh, it's pretty cool. Osterman was the first field secretary. He unfortunately died in like 1922, traveling the route. Uh, so they built a memorial to him and put it and put it in, here in Dyer. Uh, it was funded by LHA and a whole lot of other people and local people as well. And so it's a tribute to him as a found, uh, one of the key leaders in the early Lincoln Highway. And the ideal section, which is kind of related to that. It was done about the same time. It's a, a 1.3 mile section with super wide paved roads, thicker cement, sidewalks, lighting, landscaping, a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, Joyce and I and a bunch of our other folks were very involved with them for several years to, to restore this um, uh, place. We, we took one of those 1928 <coughs> marker, uh, uh, markers and put it on the site. So it really is a place to stop and you know, and uh, pass some blessings onto the Lincoln Highway. But if you ever want to go, well, first of all, it's not very far from here for you to go, but it's tough to get to. You know, you either have to park across the street and then take your life in your own hands and try to cross 30 to go see it, or mm -hmm. park just a quarter of a mile past it in a business park and walk back to it on the sidewalk and take a look at it. It's really cool, and it is. It is a seedling mile that I described, but it is 1.3 miles, and it's really cool. <laughs> and it's, it's probably the best uh, best monument. And there is the, uh, I'd say I walked it twice. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. We got another, uh, we have two other roads in Dyer, two other bridges in Dyer that have Lincoln Highway on. So one of my challenges or one of my thoughts that we could do future is I, I'm going to look to see if we can't do some more bridges across the Lincoln Highway. They're great markers. Uh, one of these, this might be the one, I can't remember, that is being remodeled next year. And INDOT, because they're clued in now to us, has asked us, do you want us to, to put that uh, recessed lettering into the, when we redo it? And I said, yes. So they're going to work with us to make sure that we continue to have those kind of markings uh, available. Last but not least, we reach Illinois on the 1913 route. And that's my, my team walking with us and we, as we finish that walk, 171 miles. So earlier I said then by 19, the 20s, there were tons of these named roads, the National Road, the Lincoln Highway, the Jefferson, and a whole bunch of stuff that they decided uh, to get rid of those and go to, a numbering, go to the numbering system. 
And so it's not Route 30, as you saw, but it's close to Route 30. And so Route 30 is a good marker to tell you that you're reasonably close to the Lincoln Highway, but it's not the Lincoln Highway. It's a little different. And you can see we picked up Warsaw, Columbia City, Plymouth, uh, Wanata, Hannah, Hamlet, Atwood, Inwood, Etna Green. All of those became part of the, the new uh, Lincoln Highway. And there's again a picture of a, of a 1920 marker that marks that route. There are the towns. So I've got a few pictures here. In Columbia City is our great museum. It's a block off the Lincoln Highway, but uh, uh, and Thomas Marshall was a vice president and it's, a, it's, it's in his childhood home. Another thing I like looking for are places that aren't there anymore. Lorraine is really a ghost town. There's not much there. I think it was only a truck, a, a railroad stop at one time that people could get on the train at that place. If you go there now, there's a couple of barns and a couple of farms. But I like looking for those kinds of places. Keeps me occupied. You also get surprises. When I walked and got to Warsaw, I, I'm walking down the road across the tracks, and here comes a steam locomotive going north. And I, so I stopped, took a picture of it. Um, and also we have a kiosk in Warsaw that uh, is out by the Chinworth Bridge. Do you know where that is? Just west of town. It's a 1890s beautiful bridge. It's now a walking bridge because you can't get a car across it. So, uh, but it's uh, pretty cool. We worked on two historic panels in Bourbon. If you, if any of you are from Bourbon or drive 30, old 30 going that way, you'll see these right in the middle of town, across from the, the pump, the old pump that they have downtown. Uh, and they tell the story. The left one tells the story of the Lincoln Highway over time, and the, the right one uh, tells it how it affected Bourbon in Marshall County. And the, the second picture is the little kiosk we have up here around the corner on Jefferson. If you haven't seen it, you can stop and see that. We also have a little historic panel there that talks about that being the Lincoln Highway. Um, you probably have seen this barn. You may know this barn. We tell everybody about the uh, quilt trail through Marshall County and, and that it's a place to see and you'll see these in a lot of places, but uh, uh, Plymouth and Marshall County has really promoted that. There's a yeah, marker out here on Lincoln Highway uh, for a travel lodge on uh, just a little further east from here, maybe a mile east of here. Oh, and that's, I'm sorry, that's the uh, monument or the uh, kiosk that we have here, the brick on the right. Here's our 1928 marker in front of the courthouse. I think that's a, um, a facsimile. I don't think that's a real one because real ones are, are reasonably, again, people try to rip things off or give you a hard time. And I think we have a real one here upstairs going out or just a part of one, I, I'm trying to recall. And then here's the remodeled mo mo uh, mobile station again around the corner on Jefferson down this way. Our group took a tour of that and met the owner the, other, uh, the last time we were here, which was October, I believe. There's a neat sign out here at, at the edge of town where if you, if you take the Lincoln Jefferson on out, it curves north and then turns left to go towards Donaldson. And at that intersection, there is a green street sign that says Lincoln Highway in both directions. <laughs> so, so we like signing it, but I, I think we've overdone it there. If you got, if you get, where do I go? And that is the, uh, uh, the garrison building right on the corner of uh, Lincoln Way in downtown. Which there is a I like the next picture because it's it's uh, it's the way I feel about Hamlet. This road is real rough there. It hasn't been repaired much. And so it feels like it might have been the road in 1920 or 1930. It's never been paved again. Um, but it's a good view of little old Hamlet down, down the way. Hannah got the idea of uh, painting some bridges. So they have painted this bridge. Uh, we gave them some suggestions on lettering. Um, to add some additional stuff to it. And they've got a bridge on the other side of town as well that they want to do and we've offered the help, but they haven't gotten around to it just yet. So 
But it gives you an idea. We can take these these county bridges and do some neat stuff with them that we kind of continue to highlight the Lincoln Highway. Over in Wanata was one of the stops for the Lincoln funeral train. And uh, so there's a little plaque there, and there's a neat old caboose that's got a little museum in it in one of the top. And this, this last picture is in Valparaiso, because we kind of skipped Valparaiso in the first part. But Valparaiso was on the route both times, but this is downtown by their city office building. They have a plaque. They have also uh, uh, references to the Sauk Trail, which comes in right in there. And we talked about that a little bit ago. So. That's our quick tour. I, I, I know I raced across the country and I raced through Indiana, but I wanted to give you a flavor for some of the things that we, you know, I look for and I think others look for when they're traveling the road. It's certainly by no means complete, uh, but I wanted to give you a flavor of it. <clears throat> uh, I want to draw you this, uh, draw your attention to this because in 2004, uh, Sandy and I were talking about it just a few minutes ago. We're going to host the national conference. So a lot of people from all over the country, Lincoln Highway members, are going to come to uh, central Indiana, north central Indiana. Uh, we have picked the <coughs> Hotel Elkhart as our host site because it's right on the Lincoln Highway and it's, it's a neat old refurbished uh, hotel. Uh, but we're going to be taking tours from there out east and west. And one of the tours on two different days, on Tuesday and the Thursday of that week, uh, we're going to come through Plymouth. We're going to go to South Bend along the Lincoln Highway, then come south on the Michigan Road and end up in Plymouth for um, a period of time, then take the, the 1928 route and go east to Warsaw and then back up to Elkhart. And we're going to do that twice, two different groups. Um, because we're going to show off both routes. We're going to show off some, uh, we're going to stop at Studebaker for a while, which is a pretty neat museum. We're going to stop some time here. We want to show them the Reese Theater and what's been done there. We want to show people around the country that what the Lincoln Highway means to uh, all of us, and how, how cool these towns are. The best thing, I tell people, we're not about the road, we're about the trip. You know, we have a little tagline that we're using. It's not even on there, is it? The journey is the destination. And so taking the journey, it, it uh, takes you to some really neat places, but more importantly, you need some really neat people. And in Indiana, when I walked it twice, the, most, the biggest highlight for me was, meeting Hoosiers. There's a lot of really good people in the state. Really fun people. I could tell you stories all night long about walking and knocking on doors and meeting people uh, that were just open their doors for us and we just had a great time. Uh, getting those people who brought us cookies out on the road. Wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> or cupcakes. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's our byway sign, which you may see up and down the road. That The other one is... Uh, but Joyce and I are wearing, uh, wearing on our shirts, right? And this is what we've been using for years. The two roads are uh, both showing. So that's my quick tour across the country with a little little history thrown in, but it was mostly to, to give you, um, if you like to go out and drive, and you don't want to take just take the freeway all the time, you know, and, and not see much, then take the Lincoln Highway and stop and see a lot of stuff and a lot of neat people. I'll open it up for any questions you have because I have heard a few questions before we started, but I bet there's some more. Yeah, Mike. Uh, Jeff, can you recommend a, a, a good book that's a good narrative of where the highway goes across the country? Sure. Um, yeah, actually, there are several good books, but uh, um, Joyce, do you know the name? Brian Butko is the author. You might write that down. B U T K O. If you just Google Brian Butko, you'll see Brian Butko. Oh, that's Sue's going to grab one. Oh, okay. And I don't remember the names of them, so that's the trick here. I don't remember the names of books, but he is, he, um, and in fact, he has some of my pictures in his book, so that's another example. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a, a fellow who drove the. Uh, you have an old, by the way, there's an old car out here that you might want to go take a look at afterwards. It's probably as old as the Lincoln Highway. It's not as old as the Lincoln Highway, but it's it's old. Is that it's, your scale? It's probably 90 yeah. years old. Okay. Huh? That's Jack's car. Yeah, I know. I saw him get out of it. I waved at him. He's going to play his guitar for us, too. No, no. 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 <laughs> but it's right outside here. I just saw him pull up when he, when he got here. Now, this is Butko's latest one, but he's got two or three, and, and, and each one 
He tries to make them a little bit different, but this is the one I used when I traveled it, so it's a, it's a good book. Okay, I would, and, and by the way, if you just look up Indiana, or if you look up Lincoln Highway, there, there's so many resources uh, that you could go to and, and find something else. I'd be happy to, if you see something that looks halfway decent, ask us about it, and we'll, we'll tell you what our experience was with it. Yes, sir. Now you said Route 66 doesn't go all the way. What about US 6 here? How is that parallel? Good, 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 good thought. US 6 is the Grand Army of the Republic. Highway. I did talk about this last night, so uh, it, it, it didn't make it last. No, 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 that's all right. That's all right. I, I didn't want to duplicate for those people who did make both of them. So, but I'm prepared to. Yeah, that's why I wanted to open it up for questions. The Grand Army of the Republic was actually named in 1925. It's the longest coast-to-coast -coast highway, but it, it really wasn't paved until 1952, completely paved. So it existed, and it's Route Six basically the whole way. Uh, so it goes all the way from, um, from what? Provincetown. Provincetown, Massachusetts, right. right? Provincetown, Massachusetts, way out on the Cape to Bishop, California, as I recall, way down in the southern part. So it's 3,600 miles, which is another three or 400 miles longer than the Lincoln Highway. So good, good question. Yes, sir. Yeah, you talked about the uh, seedling miles. I am trying to get local people involved in it. Right. I know with uh, rails and the canals and stuff like that, we try to get uh, communities and bonds and it's more of a, uh, a business type. Right. So you have this highway go all the way out, it's a set deal. When did when did uh, the Lincoln Highway become, did, did you get a lot of participation through the communities or did it become a paved highway when the government stepped in? Uh, well, no, it started uh, uh, as a local um, grassroots as you described, and and they realized that uh, fairly sure early on that a million dollars, for example, wasn't going to be enough. That we're going to need local support, local businesses, local entrepreneurs, local people to really get behind it. And it and it really was going. But once the federal government got on, the speed of getting things paid stepped up. Right? Does that make sense? Um, I don't know if I can add any more. Yeah. Yes, sir. The shortcut. Uh, what, where was the pressure to make the shortcut? Um, uh, people who who were unhappy that no, I don't think that's true here in Indiana. You mean going down the coming this way? I think it was the the pressure was really from the top. The LHA was saying, you know, we've got all these places where we go way up, and there are roads that we can take that are more direct. Mm -hmm. And I think we owe that to the people that we want traveling to give them a more direct route. I think it's the flip of what you asked. I think that towns like Goshen and Elkhart and South Bend and all that, South Bend was a real thriving town back in the early 1900s, right? It's still the second biggest uh, uh, town on Indiana's Lincoln Highway, anywhere. Um, I think their pressure to have it come through there was really strong at the inception. Uh, and then I think the LHA, as it gained more strength, decided to say, you know, we can shorten this thing in a number of different ways. Let's do that. And that you'll find in many states across the country, that's what they did. Out west, it was a little different. Oh, good, that's better. I can, if I get close enough, I'm afraid I'm going to chip my tooth on it. <laughs> um, out west, uh, you know, and if you go to Utah, and there are probably, you can find signs that have like four or five different years on it. And part of that's because the sand blew over the road and you can't go that way. Or the Great Salt Lake uh, is full and you can't go that way anymore. So they had to create a new route. So you'll find a 1913 route, a 1916 route, a 1919 route, different routes every year. And so they were the last to get paid. You know, one of the last states to get paid out there. So I think the pressure in Indiana was really from the top to say, hey, let's shorten it. We don't have to go up that way. But that's just Jeff talking. Who cares? <laughs> Any other questions? Jeff, the yes. Lincoln Highway marker at the courthouse is a replica. Yeah. But it replaced that. the original one that there was a storm and a tree fell on it and broke it. Uh, We've got the, the top half in upstairs. the transportation room. Okay. We have a complete one stored in the basement. Okay. So I see. I didn't remember that story. I guess I have heard that before. But and that's and that's fairly typical. Is that because of storms or because yeah. it, because uh, a, 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 a 
snow mover ran into it or whatever, a lot of them have gotten broken. Or when roads started, uh, when the roads got more and more paved, um, trucks doing that work ran over them and they got thrown into piles and whatever. So we have probably got 10 uh, intact ones in the state and then another five or six or eight that are replicas that are that we try to get out on the line uh, out of market in this area we have one over by Donaldson just uh, just east of the main intersection there in Donaldson where the Lincoln Highway comes in it's in a next to the driveway of someone's house there and it's back in the bushes you have to kind of know where to find it there's one also on private property uh, um, east of Warsaw as you're going towards Columbia City out on Old 30. And the rest of them are generally in courtyards or in museums. Am I? Jeff, an ironic thing, uh, Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the Boy Scout do the replica uh, as part of the merit badge project? We did the signs. I'm sorry? We did the signs and the replica. Yeah. Wasn't the Boy Scout involved with that? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. I drove so them all, ironic, all through town and tried to get sponsorships to provide those. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think you're probably out of time, and I don't want to hold anybody up. I'm going to stick around for a while, and I'm happy to you know, take some ad hoc comments, but I don't want to drag, drag this out for people who need to leave or go back to work or do something more productive than listen to me. <laughs> Thank you.